In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles While Peter and John were talking to the people, the priests came up to them, accompanied by the captain of the temple and the Sadducees. They were extremely annoyed at their teaching the people the doctrine of the resurrection from the dead by proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus. They arrested them, but as it was already late, they held them till the next day. But many of those who had listened to the message became believers, the total number of whom had now risen to something like 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes had a meeting in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, Jonathan, Alexander, and all the members of the high priestly families. They made the prisoners stand in the middle and began to interrogate them. By what power and by whose name have you men done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, addressed them. Rulers of the people and elders, if you are questioning us today about an act of kindness to a cripple and asking us how he was healed, then I am glad to tell you all and would indeed be glad to tell the whole people of Israel that it was by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the one you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By this name and by no other, that this man is able to stand up perfectly healthy here in your presence today. This is the stone rejected by you, the builders, but which has proved to be the keystone. For of all the names in the world given to men, this is the only one by which we can be saved. The Word of the Lord The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant us salvation. O Lord, grant success. Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord God is our light. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Alleluia! Alleluia! This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. 
Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. It was by the Sea of Tiberias, and it happened like this. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two more of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. They replied, We'll come with you. They went out and got into the boat, but caught nothing that night. It was light by now, and there stood Jesus on the shore, though the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus called out, Have you caught anything, friends? And when they answered no, he said, Throw the net out to starboard, and you'll find something. So they dropped the net, and there were so many fish that they could not haul it in. The disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. At these words, it is the Lord. Simon Peter, who had practically nothing on, wrapped his cloak round him and jumped into the water. The other disciples came on in the boat, towing the net and the fish. They were only about a hundred yards from the land. As soon as they came ashore, they saw that there was some bread there and a charcoal fire with fish cooking on it. Jesus said, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore, full of big fish, 153 of them. And in spite of there being so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples was bold enough to ask, Who are you? They knew quite well it was the Lord. Jesus then stepped forward, took the bread and gave it to them, and the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after rising from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Francis of Assisi wrote in his letter to the entire order, Humble yourselves that you may be exalted by him. Hold back nothing of yourselves for yourselves, that he who gives himself totally to you may receive you totally. St. Teresa of Calcutta once said this, If you are humble, nothing will touch you, neither praise or disgrace, because you know what you are. Humility. It sounds so simple, yet so difficult, especially when we are challenged or threatened. For the Sadducees in the first reading, Christ was a threat to their belief. The light of truth that Christ brought for them was not welcome. In their pride, they tried to extinguish that light that Peter and the other apostles share with the people. Sometimes we are not very different from the Sadducees. When we are faced with a truth that is not according to what we want, we react. And this is no different when we are encountering the light of Christ. For some people, the light makes us feel uncomfortable because it exposes everything, including things that we don't like to see. Some of us prefer to hide in the shadows than to be exposed to the light. This is what happened with Peter in the Gospel reading. Before Jesus was crucified, Peter was the one who said that he would die with Jesus, but only to deny him a moment later. 
Now, Jesus came to him again, and it made him uncomfortable. He was ashamed, and his reaction was to straight away jump to the sea and cover up his nakedness. But Jesus did not give up on him. Jesus waited for him at the shore with some breakfast. Jesus gave him peace. Jesus forgave him and restored Peter's life from the shame and guilt because of his denial. When Peter could embrace the truth, when he could embrace the forgiveness and peace, he lived the rest of his life courageously for Christ as described in the first reading. He was no longer living in shame and guilt. Brothers and sisters, how do we embrace Christ in our life? How do we embrace the forgiveness and peace that Christ offers to us every day? Will we be like the Sadducees, who refuse to accept the truth and blame God for our problems? Or will we be like Peter, who embraced God, shared the good news, and build community with the people around us? Jesus is waiting for us. His peace will give us the spiritual rest that we need. As children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that, redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.